Mac emergency services, even hematology. Every speciality has uh, something to get, gain from this talk of plasma pharesis because there are category one indication for almost all of these departments. So I have structured my uh, talk like this. Initially, I'll be dealing with the two clinical cases and I will uh, try to look up on the evidence for plasma pharesis available in snake envenomation. And what is plasma pharesis, I will deal very shortly. And the practical aspects you should be knowing the indications, mainly the category one indications, uh, the complications and take home points that you should be keeping in mind. So starting with our first patient, uh, she was a 65 year old lady uh, coming from Mayil. On 18th of December, she had a snake bite on her left leg while cutting grass outside her home. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. According to standard of practice, she was given ASV. Uh, around 25 vials of ASV were given in this situation from the, but the patient developed acute kidney injury. And also she had coagulopathy and her left leg was swelling like anything. And there was signs of envenomation. And sadly she started uh, having cough with bloody, sp uh, bloody sputum. So she, there was hemoptysis and she was deteriorating. So this was a situation in which she was rushed to Srijan emergency on 19th of December. So immediately we gave her emergency dialysis in view of her AKI and oliguria. But the patient was deteriorating. Her respiratory distress was worsening. So we did an emergency HRCT chest, which was showing diffuse features of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. And she came to a mechanical ventilation. We needed, uh, we, we had to transfuse multiple units of blood in this patient. There was HB drop, there was thrombocytopenia, her peripheral smear was showing schistocytes, and also there was consumptive coagulopathy. The INR was greater than 90. The patient was dipping. We explained the situation to the relatives. And as we can understand, for a patient who was ambulant just two days ago, a, almost a death notice was very shocking to the family. All the relatives were in, outside the ICU. Everything was very emotional. We were also very sad. We had nothing else to do. So we were stuck at that point. So we, we analyzed the case. She had HB drop. She had thrombocytopenia. She had acute kidney injury. And also peripheral smear showing schistocytes. So that's a classical uh, picture for a thrombotic microangiopathy. Along with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage. And also coagulopathy. So everything fits a severe case of wiper envenomation. So, at that time we had an idea that why not we try plasma pharesis in this patient. Already we were giving her around seven to 10 units of plasma, fresh frozen plasma in this patient. So why not try plasma pharesis because of her thrombotic microangiopathy, her coagulopathy. So, we gave her uh, around two sessions of plasma pharesis with fresh frozen plasma and albumin. The next day, her reports were improving. The next day, morning, her INR came as two. And her respiratory uh, requirements were uh, reducing, and she was, we were able to wean her off ventilator. She started improving. She was shifted to room. Her left leg was, had necrotizing fasciitis. Thanks to our plastic surgery, Dr. Nibu, he uh, did a wonderful job. And, our, uh, his, her leg also improved. She was discharged and her, her currently her creatinine is 1.3 milligram. So this is a, just a case report from Max Hospital Mohali by uh, Emeritus Professor Vinay Sahuja of Department of Nephrology PGA. He mentions that plasma pharesis for plas pulmonary hemorrhage can be given in life-saving situations and it was effective in that case also. Coming to the second case, here also, it was a 54 year old female. Uh, she was coming from EDQ and she had also a left leg bite. She was taken to a uh, immediate nearby hospital. They, get, they tried giving her anti snake venom. But, uh, she showed features of some allergy. So they withheld the infusion. And on 8th of January, the interesting part is that 8th of January, our previous patient was discharged and on the same day, this patient came to our emergency. So while she came to Srijan, she had left leg uh, edema, 
that acute kidney injury but also we also we we thought that why, why not we go ahead with premedication and try asv once again we gave her asv but her renal functions were worsening so we ha- had to give her emergency dialysis she had coagulopathy she had a thrombocytopenia this was her peripheral smear picture thanks to uh, dr anjana from pathology she this was a classical picture of uh, schistocytes and due to thrombotic microangiopathy we can also see the helmet cells in, in between so here also so here also uh, we had a picture of thrombotic microangiopathy acute kidney injury and also typical peripheral smear showing cystocytes so he, in this patient also uh, we gave her plasma pheresis and all, after the plasma pheresis there was rapid improvement in her in her hematological parameters we were able to wean her off dialysis she improved and also she was this, her current creatinine is around 0.6 mg so this was an adjunctive use of plasma pheresis apart from the standard of care of anti snake venom and both the patients were salvaged so this is a um, this study uh, shows that thrombotic microangiopathy in hematotoxic snake bites we know that this occurs we have studied the theory but it is often overlooked this study tried to see the prevalence of this coagulopathy thrombotic microangiopathy and acute kidney injury 56% of the patients had coagulopathy 18% had thrombotic microangiopathy and 37% of patients had acute kidney injury so typical thrombotic microangiopathy spectrum is characterized by microangiopathic hemolytic anemia thrombocytopenia and acute kidney injury which were all present in our cases also so it was seen that if the patient has aki along with thrombotic microangiopathy there is high chance that the patient will be dialysis dependent meaning the severity of aki will be very high so this case report tried to see the use of plasma exchange in snake bite associated thrombotic microangiopathy and they also felt it was successful and they mentioned it as an adjunctive therapeutic option and this uh, case series tried to uh, see the experience from uh, around 20 patients and they also feel that there are improvement in hematological parameters and also for the limb salvage it was useful so they also recommend as an adjunctive therapy in specific situations so what happens in in thrombotic microangiopathy in snake bite we know hematotoxic venom uh, contains of different enzymes it activates the coagulation cascade and also leading to consumptive coagulopathy leading to aki and also it leads to tissue damage that is the reason for the local limb edema so acute kidney injury is a hypothesis to be due to the direct injury by the toxin or due to thrombotic microangiopathy but the exact mechanism of why thrombotic microangiopathy occurs in snake bite is not clear it is not clearly studied we all know that there is usually initially consumptive coagulopathy but it it improves with the asv within the 24 to 48 hours but if there is a case of thrombotic microangiopathy the response is very delayed it persists longer like in our patients around 4 5 days there was no response so once tma is diagnosed we, we can consider plasma exchange as a therapeutic option and stating that it is an adjunctive option i am not stating that for all viper venom we should do plasma pheresis the standard treatment should be followed asv should be given observation should be done and in specific situations we can think of this as an adjunctive the, because it makes sense also because plasma exchange is a therapy which removes high molecular weight substances from the plasma in exchange for normal uh, fresh frozen plasma or albumin so it removes the high molecular weight venom containing plasma so it removes the load to the the body the lung the kidney and the blood vessels so this is the uh, american society for apheresis guidelines that states the category of evidence for each indication for plasma apheresis they mentioned that for envenomation the category is 3 that is lo- it is low quality and it can be used uh, used should be individualized and it is grade 2c recommendation i have studied in the database for this recommendation there were it was only two case reports so we can't do any rcts on this topic so we can't expect much greater evidence from there there 
but we should use understand the situation that we have a lot of snake venoms we see so many viper infection and we can uh, keep this as an in the back of mind so just revising what is plasmapheresis it is an extra corporeal treatment for the removal of plasma along with pathological substances like antibody immune complex or large molecular weight substances like venom from the plasma so if it is an acutely toxic substance with long half life and large molecular weight it is an ideal candidate like immunoglobulin it is if it is an antibody that is leading to uh, anti-vasculitis it, and it can be it is if it is acutely toxic to the lung and if it is persist longer which has a longer half life half life and it can't be immediately stopped by a rituximab or a uh, intoxin therapy and it has a high molecular weight this would be an ideal uh, method of removing that thing so the removed plasma is replaced with colloid a combination of crystalloid and colloid means normosaline along with albumin or fresh frozen plasma the concept concept is that by re reducing the level of the substance we can prevent further damage or reversal of pathological process and we can buy some time i will explain later uh, this is a conceptual image of a uh, plasma filter tube what happens in plasma process the blood flows like this and out of the plasma filter which is around which is having a pore size of around 0.3 to 0.5 micro micrometer let's show the filter image later you can see that is it looks exactly like a dialysis filter but what is the difference this is the difference that is the pore size is higher pore size is higher so larger molecular weight substances not urea and creatinine but things like antibodies immunoglobulin albumin immune complexes floating factors all can leak out but the cells are retained so in i will show the uh, example of anti global amaisman uh, disease which is a category 1 indication for plasma paralysis for nephrology here anti global gbm antibodies is the pathogenic thing so they act on the kidney and also the lung causing pulmonary hemorrhage the therapy is endoxin cyclophosphamide but the time that is required for cyclophosphamide to act and reduce the level of antibodies to half is around 21 days so in this 21 days the patient become dialysis dependent and his her kidney is lost so that is in that situation if you give earlier plasma paralysis there is removal of this antibodies and we can buy time and we can save the lung and the kidney so almost this is the same mechanism which is used in all the clinical situations so while we studied mbbs plasma paralysis was mainly the topic of blood bank i didn't know that nephrologists could do plasma paralysis while i am studying mbbs so centrifugation and plasma filtration are the two methods for plasma paralysis so centrifugation is done ma mainly by the blood bank uh, team they usually separate the blood into components including plasma and also the blood cell components and the, this plasma is removed and uh, replaced with colloids that is how they do the centrifugation this is usually done while they collect the blood while they make the ffp and uh, uh, plasma in usual practice so that, that machine can be used for this and this is how a nephrologist does a plasma paralysis here the blood is taken from the patient uh, using the pump it is going to the plasma filter the fl plasma is filtered here and it is wasted it is removed and the replacement solution like albumin or any colloids is given back to the patient so that is replaced i picture is like this this is the centrifugation machine which is very big uh, and little different here we can see our familiar dialysis machine in every one of your hospitals also you can see, use this machine the only difference is that this is filter is different it is a plasma filter and a pipe is coming like this which is yellow this is the yellow plasma which is being collected in this bucket and here the albumin and the colloids ffp are given to the patient it is exactly the same machine there is no other machine required the same technician can do the procedure it takes around one and a half hours but the difference is this filter and that is the costly thing also so what's the difference between a dialysis membrane and plasma membrane we can see that in a dialysis membrane the sieving coefficient in the y axis that is how much it can be removed Catenin in, in usual low molecular weight thing can be removed by a dialysis membrane, but a plasma membrane can remove high molecular weight things like albumin and immunoglobulin. So practically, what are the aspects we can we should know? It is just that 
there is no dialysis is being happening it is just ultra filtration that is convection method of uh, dialysis is used that is under pressure it is filtered and it costs around 14000 rupees it is available everywhere it can be reused around 4 to 5 times if the technician is very good and around 7 to 8 ffp and one albumin is required for one session because we have to replace at least two third of the plasma volume which are we are removing if uh, i usually i remove around 2.5 liters of plasma i have to replace around 2 liters of uh, this ffp and albumin that comes to around 7 to 8 ffp and one albumin so one albumin costs around 4000 this costs around 14000 18000 blood and the procedure around 25000 per for the first session but we are re reusing the filter so the second time this 14000 is not there that will be the amount so it is actually cheaper compared to other modalities like iv immunoglobulin so for many of the category one indication i will be mention later we have to use iv immunoglobulin which is more costly than this method so in medical colleges many times that is being used because of financial reason so in the average time is around one and a half hours it can be done daily or alternate day based on the indication around five to six sessions can be done and the target is for thrombotic microangiopathy that is platelet count greater than 1.5 lakh and the ldh which is a marker of hemolysis should be near normal for two to three consecutive days that's when we stop the uh, plasma process so coming to the indications the category 1 renal indication for my, our practice is and as earlier described anti gbm disease thrombotic microangiopathy due to any complement defects and thrombotic thrombocytopenia purpura um, anka associated rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis this has been a recent discussion uh, in the evidence based medicine because of pexivas trial pexivas trial did it support use of plasma pharesis in anka associated vasculitis but there are uh, objections to that also so many people think that in acute cases of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage rapid presentation of rpgn even plex holds relevance now also now also it has been used practically in almost all centers and for kidney transplantation for specific indications like abo incompatible transplant or any in case of antibody mediated rejection and also desensitization if there is severe load of antibodies against the donor we can desensitize the patient so that we can give the kidney uh, to that donor so all this uh, are category 1 indications of uh, plasma press and this is the most commonly used indications in our practice so this is the american society for aphoresis 2019 Uh, indications the list is very extensive i am just around 1/10th of that list i am just mentioning only the category 1 indication so for neurology acute gillen barre syndrome and also acute myasthenia gravis i discussed with my neurology colleagues they also tell that it is currently used here also in acute situations when the patient is not affording for iv immunoglobulin this is used or in case when the patient has been given iv immunoglobulin and there is no response as second line plasma process is used so for rheumatology i already discussed the uh, anka associated vasculitis uh, and also pulmonology the dh part for hematology thrombotic microangiopathy all thrombotic microangiopathy is not equal to plasma paresis we have there are secondary causes of uh, many causes of thrombotic microangiopathy the in which uh, plasma paresis is not given as category 1 indication is mainly for complement mediated from uh, thrombotic microangiopathy and also thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura it is a category 1 indication and for gastroenterology this is a very uh, recent uh, evidence that for acute liver failure high volume plasma exchange that is around 8 to 10 liters per day i mentioned earlier 2 to 3 liters but high volume plasma exchange is th is thought to be useful or for acute liver failure because it removes the endotoxin and also it Im improves the uh, brain edema everything so that is th thought to be useful in acute liver failure it is given as category 1 indication not 3 that is very interesting my uh, myeloma cast nephropathy this was a standard indication for plasma pharesis while we studied but during my dm when i was first year there was many cases of myeloma cast nephropathy but while i was in third year the cases dipped because the evidence was a little against the plasma pharesis but there are people still who use it for myeloma cast nephropathy because the concept is that for cast nephropathy there is high load of low molecular weight protein in the circulation if you remove that load it can be salvage the kidney while there is the action of bortezomib and chemotherapy sets it so conceptually it is useful and many people still use it so and mainly for gynecology 
uh, i hope this doesn't happen to any of you gynecologists postpartum uh, uh, any, any of your patients postpartum renal cortical necrosis due to acute kidney injury uh thrombotic microangiopathy in acute kidney injury in the postpartum period can be seen in different situations it can be uh, due to help syndrome abruption leading to dic and also it can be due to atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome which is a complement mediated disorder and in that situation the, the chance of going to renal cortical necrosis and complete yes at end stage renal disease is very high high likely so if you should pick it up earlier and if you give plasma pharesis early it can be effective so we should always not a complication before doing anything so the hypocalcemia hemorrhage because we are removing the coagulation factors thrombocytopenia hypotension because we are rapidly removing high thrombotic pressure things infection we are removing the immunoglobulins hypokalemia hypothermia all can occur so we should be uh, taking protection against all these complications and take home points this re readily available therapeutic option option useful in reducing rapidly reducing the plasma levels of pathological substances and in case of wiper envenomation leading to dah or thrombotic microangiopathy it can be considered as an adjunct to anti venom it can be done using the plasma filter in dialysis machine and there are many category 1 indications across all medical specialties i would like to thank dr jiljit uh, under whom both these patients were admitted and dr anjana johnson for the pathology pictures our blood bank for giving the uh, around 60 transfusions were given for this both of around these patients and our dialysis team who had experience of plasma paralysis thank you Do you have some experience in uh, snake bite in children? So part of it is usually effective uh, to uh, reduce the dose of snake bites. Yes, no sir. Uh, you know, I don't know my personal experience, but in children, uh, usually plasma pulses is not that much at risk because the chance of hypotension and chance of infection is probably more high in children. So in, in even in other indications also, we keep plasma pulses as the last option in other indications. So for, for reducing ASP dose, I will not advise because uh, ASP should be given twice. In specific indications like I mentioned, like MNs, like DHs, like 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 it's not response. You can think of as an anti-anti option. You can use plasma pulses to not reach, but the complications are higher because of the rapid volume changes and also transplant. Good evening, doctor. Uh, doctor Agba here. Yeah, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Yes. Can you? Uh, for venom, uh, snake venom. For snake venom, is there any difference between different type of venom, like cobra or uh, pipers? Yes, for treatment, all are same, is it? Is it common, or you have to have a different type of treatment for 
different type of snakes. I mean, snake venom. This variation according to the type of snake venom is the difference in the type of venom, type of action also. So, uh, compared to the neurotoxic and the action is different. Our topic was uh, for either because it was more neurotoxic and it was stronger in my mind. So, it's not for the neurotoxic species. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thinking out of the box. Yes. Thinking out of the box. Out of the box. I don't in the box. the box. the box. the the box. the the Excuse me, doctor. Is it very expensive? Hello? Can you hear me? Dr. Akbar here. Uh, what is the cost like, doctor? The cost of the class of is around 14,000. And initially, I will cost around 4,000. And FOP from the red flag is the cost of the red 
Thank you, Doctor. On behalf of the Kanur IMA, I extend a sincere thanks to Dr. Tom Jos Kakanat for his excellent and informative talk on plasma process. Thank you, Doctor. Also, I thank all senior members of the Kanur IMA and our friends for attending this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.